personal finance presentation, budget example, and recommended category percentages. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. Here is our example budget. Note that the format of the budget can differ based on your needs, your style, and how far out into the future you are budgeting, typically that being a month or a quarter or a year. The budget, in essence, usually is focusing in on the income statement type of budget. So in other words, we're taking the past history, our balance sheet and income statement, then projecting out the behavior statement the performance statement into the future. So therefore, we're usually focusing in on a budgeted income statement. And then we can think about where we will be at the end of that budgeted time period, which is a balance sheet type of item. If it's a cash flow budget, then we might kind of back into where we expect to be from a cash flow basis at the end of the budgeted period, which might be then at the end of the month or the end of the year. Now note, we talked about in prior presentations that we have different types of tools that you might be using to put together your financial statements. Those tools might have some budgetary capacity to put together the budget as well. But no matter what type of tool you use, I find that it's often useful to put the budget together in some kind of spreadsheet program such as Excel. It's also a really good exercise to put together budgets in Excel. It's a classical kind of exercise, especially if you're doing a 12 month type of budget because you have more flexibility to do what you want to do in Excel and you could usually have more transparency to see what is actually happening with the calculation as you put it together in Excel, then take that information and put it into the other software, possibly something like a QuickBooks or accounting software or whatever other tool that you are using and that then will help you to get your your budget versus actual type of comparisons so we have in essence an income statement type of layout then what's going to happen is we want the budget this one we're going to say is going out for one period such as one month here we might want to break out the percentage of sales and the reason it's useful to break out the percentage of sales or one reason is we can use these percentages to compare to other people to help us with our planning. It's also useful for us to see what will happen with our variable kind of activities as income changes. And we can try to use these percentages to stay within a range and give some kind of estimate of what kind of changes should happen in relation to income as we budget out into the future. Then we could compare this to the actual amount as time actually passes. So clearly what would happen is we want to do the budget before the time passes. You might even do a year long budget into the future, month by month type of budget, then time will pass. You can look at your actual numbers, which you would then compare to the budget numbers and then look at the difference between the actual and budget that then helping you to change your behavior possibly in the future and then make new plans and goals for the next time period. Now, when you're doing the 12 month budget, you might just put it together without the columns for actual and, and the difference here. And you just try to project out what you're going to be using. And then if you had software like a QuickBooks or something like that, if you put that into QuickBooks, QuickBooks is actually quite good at then taking that data and then doing a side by side comparison. Other financial software often pretty good at that. If you have budgeting type of software and you actually create the budget, then you might be able to do a similar kind of process and use the software then to do a side-by-side -side comparison as your actual data becomes apparent as time passes. Now, the format of the budget here, we're just looking at, in essence, an income statement, which you could do in just like a, what, what we would call like a single step income statement, which only has two categories, income and then expenses. So you could do that same kind of process, or you might wanna break it out in a little bit more detail here. Also note that we're basically looking at a budget here for a, a cash flow budget. So we're breaking this down to a cash flow basis. Some accrual concepts may be important at some points as well. And you want to take them into consideration because remember when you're planning from one month to another month, if there are some cash bases can, th can throw off the comparisons in some way. So for example, if you were to pay all of your insurance and that's the class one, one classical prepayment example in January for the entire year, then when you do a comparison between January and February as to your performance, January will look worse because you paid cash of an entire year's worth of insurance, but you didn't do anything worse. You actually saved money over the 12 month period by doing that. And so that's why we use an accrual concept to 
to kind of even out so when we do that comparison and then we also have a cash flow component when we're looking at the business side of things so if you're just doing things on a complete cash flow basis you want to when you do your comparisons you want to take into consideration those types of things when you're kind of comparing one month to another month now note of course just like the income statement your income might be less you I mean less line items although hopefully the dollar amount will be greater than the expenses because we focus in on one thing to generate income and then we do all the other stuff in order to do everything else we want we pay for so we have other categories for it and then you might put something like the the fixed items and even your savings account we adjusted it a little bit up top to put your savings up top because these are things that you might be saying these are your short-term goals you might have short-term goals for like saving for college saving for a vacation that's going to be happening even in, in the next year or you know saving you know longer term savings that you might be dedicated to in the short run and you're going to be taking them out of your wages in a similar way as say the fixed expenses meaning they are what they are and you might want to be taking them out even before you get the money right take your money and put it right into the savings account so you can save for these particular things that you want to save for and therefore even though it's not an expense from a cash flow statement it's going to be coming out of your spending cash and you might then allocate it up top here as something that's going to be coming out directly something that you're going to say i have no control over because i've already decided that i'm going to be taking this money out before i do anything else before i do anything with my discretional spending and you might put it up top so again these aren't really traditional expenses because they're going to be going into a savings account you haven't spent them but from a cash flow spending basis then in a budgeting basis you might want to show them up top as things that you have committed to to take out and then we've got the breakout between the fixed and variable uh, expenses you might not break them out between fixed and variable and, and again we're on basically a cash flow basis here so these are cash outflows but you'll have the same concept whether or not you have one long expense category or whether you have fixed and variable same kind of idea the fixed items should be easier for you to budget out even 12 months out into the future and they're also items you have less control over you'll recall the rent being the classic example you already signed the lease it is what it is you've got the the payments on the lease for the next 12 months i don't no matter how much time i spend within my home or outside my home i pay the same around for for the lease right so that that means you could put it up here and just let it go as not not something that you're going to be focused in on for your short-term behavioral changes because you don't have any control over it. and it is something when you project out even 12 months into the future should be quite easy for you to project out because it's going to be the same typically for 12 months so you might have a similar thing for the loan payments remembering that the loan payments this is kind of a cash basis so we're thinking about the entire loan payments as something that's coming out of our spendable checking account cash the internet we might have internet that is basically a standard fixed amount that we're committed to that we think is going to be the same the full way out transportation if you pay for something like a train or some kind of standardized uh, uh, transportation then it might be there it might vary if it was some other kind of transportation like your automobile then you might have control over it down here life insurance remember that when you're thinking about life insurance and rent insurance these are two things that if we're paying on a month by month basis then we might put it in there and you have this fixed amount also note that if you pay it every six months or something like that it still might be somewhat fixed because it is what it is but you would have to adjust your 12 month budget to show the cash flow that are happening only two times a year and and just make that adjustment for it and, and budget for the cash flow on those two times then we got the variable expenses these are the things that are not going to be as clear these are the things that change over time and possibly the things that have more you have more control over so note with these usually oftentimes they're going to go up as your income goes up so if your income is fixed and you think that the whole next year is going to be pretty much the same as last year then you can possibly use the same numbers all the way across in a 12-month budget but if you think your income is going to increase or change in some way then you might be saying hmm what's going to happen then to my expenses down here usually they're going to go up your discretionary spending for most people goes up as their income goes up so you might have to go through these on a line by line basis and say well how much more are they going to go up if my income goes up or how can i show the change in a 12-month period uh, for my variable expenses 
And so you can kind of have to go through these line by line, but you can start with this baseline of taking the comparison of say your income statement amount for categories like groceries compared to your income up top, which in this case is 7.63%. So you can say, hey, my groceries are currently 7.63% of my income. If my income goes up, I'll probably buy better groceries. I might spend my money on, you know, more expensive food. I'll be eating, you know, the fancy the fancy mustard instead of like the normal mustard or something, you know. And so you you're going to you're going to spend more there, but you you want to have some kind of control over it. So you might say I'm just going to keep that 7.63 the same as my wages go up, for example, and that might give you some way to budget, you know, how much you might want to spend more on groceries as your income goes up, giving you some flexibility to your budget by using those percentages. And we'll do a practice problem on this if you want to see how you might go through this thought process. Also know that the food and the restaurant, both food items, but we broke them out between two different types of food items. And that could be, that's your personal choice as to whether or not you want to, to break something out like that. Clothing, same kind of thing. You would think it would increase over time. Uh, and if wages go up, but you want to keep it within some range, most likely telephone, you would think that would be something that would have kind of a mixed component. You probably have a baseline. I have to pay this much no matter what. And then I can go over that and I have some control if I go crazy on texting or, you know, whatever, whatever, then, then you would need that. Uh, then you might use a variable component. So you have the same kind of thing. This might go up over time, but it, but it, and you can use a percent to help with that. Utilities are the same way. You probably have a baseline component and then you have some control over some component. Utilities is also something, especially the electricity that might be seasonal. So you might say, and, and that might be the same for things, even like clothing or something like that. You might say, I buy more clothes during a certain time of year. I clearly might use more electricity during a certain time of year. So when you do your 12 month budget, then you wanna take that into consideration. Say, well, what's gonna be the increase or decrease during the times of years when I use more or less energy. Personal care, this is something that clearly often goes up with your income goes up. So you might want to uh, use your percentage basis there, something like medical expenses, then the recreation, also something that would clearly generally go up as your income goes up oftentimes. So you might want to use your percentage basis to increase that proportionally, gifts and donations in a similar similar fashion. Then we've got the total expenses, which we added the fixed expenses and the variable expenses to get the total and then the surplus. So note, we're adding this up on the outflows, the total outflows being the 300, which includes, we have the savings, the amount that we're committed to the savings, which is an outflow, not really an expense. Then we've got the 1815 for the fixed, and then we've got the 1244 for the, uh, for the variable, that gives us the 3359 minus the income which we had which is the 3799 that gives us our difference of the 440 which we can then say where are we going to put that 440 either it stays possibly uh, in the checking account we see the checking account increasing over time so that's where we can kind of tie it in to the balance sheet account at least to the cash account uh, or we can allocate that and think about allocating that out to savings account or something like that so budget percentages so then you might say well you know, these percentages, this, you might use the percentages that you did last, last period to think about what your percentages are. And then you might start saying, well, what do other people do on their budget percentages at this point in their life, at this time, at this income level, and so on and so forth. And you could then talk to gurus about, you know, what the best percentages are. And note, when you do do that, they're going to have to give you their percent spending on a percentage basis. They, some a, a financial guru that's you're going to give you financial information is even if you talk to them personally is probably not customizing you know directly to you they're using some kind of some kind of uh, parameters that they're accustomed to usually in the format of percentages so we got to get kind of used to these percentages so that we could do these types of comparisons and then you can try to look up different resources possibly to see what other people are doing to meet the particular goals that and try to piece together your unique goals and try to get advice about those goals based on you know what other people do with similar kind of scenarios so here's just an example of it the budget percentages by category you say could say giving 10 percent saving 10 percent food 10 to 15 percent utilities 5 to 10 percent housing costs 25 percent transportation 10 percent health 
five to 10%, insurance 10 to 25%, recreation five to 10%, personal spending five to 10%, and miscellaneous five to 10%. Now, again, these percentages are, are you know, you, they can give you kind of a guidance, but they're somewhat baseline because, of course, these percentages will change as your life situation changes. So we talked about many different, you know, your different life situations in terms of your age, possibly your, your, you know, your marital status, how many people that you have in your lifestyle and whatnot income levels could affect it. But this, these kind of breakout can give you at least some idea of, of a comparison. And you could look for other people's suggestions at other stages in their, in your life that would basically be possibly lining up to where you are currently at and then do your comparisons. But in order to do so, you're gonna to need to break down these kind of percentages using these kind of percentages. We do do these calculations to get these, these percentage calculations a little bit in our practice problems as we put together our practice budgets. So if you're intimidated by these kind of percent calculations and whatnot, you don't know exactly, you know, work on practice problems and that will, that will help. You know, just work in practice problems is the way to, way to do it normally. So good budget characteristics. So a good budget should be, of course, well planned. It should be a realistic budget. But it's just like anything when you're trying to when you're trying to set goals. Same kind of ideas that we can't we don't want the goal to be too lofty because if if we have no ability to reach the goal, then of course we'll be discouraged. But if the goal's too short, too low, if the bar is too low, then we're not going to be challenged and we're going to feel bored. We're just going to walk over the bar. So we want to put the bar just over what we think we could possibly do so that we can kind of extend our abilities and whatnot and, and, you know, have some chance at least of hitting it. So then we need the goals to be flexible. They're going to have to be things that, you know, have you can't have complete rigidity within the budget. You need to have some flexible characteristics. And again, some of that ratio calculations as a percentage of income, as the income adjusts, you have a budget that can flex with it. That's what the variable components will typically do. Then uh, you want to work that into your budgeting process. Because the goal is is not to have it restrict your d- decision making in the future. It should let you make your decisions easier in the future. Because again, every decision shouldn't be some pain. You shouldn't be reworking the whole process when you make a decision. You should be like, I already did most of the work. Now I'm just now I just need to decide. You know, something that I've that's within a certain range or so on. So clearly communicate. So obviously it's a lot easier to take action if your budget goals are cl- clearly communicated, you're able to express them to yourself and others uh, fairly clearly. The idea of the budget is to make things uh, more clear so that you can then see exactly what you're doing in the future and if the decisions you're making are in alignment with the goals that you have set in the budget.